Welcome. In this session on linear data analysis, we'll explore a definition of a basis set. So if we're given, if we're given a set of vectors A that are a span or a spanning set, or we will sometimes use the verb, say, that span a vector space V, then a basis of the vector space is a linearly independent spanning set. Let's go through some simple examples and determine whether they're linearly independent and therefore whether they're a basis. So suppose that we have vectors that are 1, 0, and 0, 2. And if that is our set, are these linearly independent? With two vectors, linear independence is relatively easy to establish because all we have to determine is whether they're scalar multiples of each other. They're not, so these are not scalar multiples, so that means they are a basis. Let's suppose that we're given the vectors 1, 0 in our set, and then the next one is 1 and 0 0.0001. This is a troublesome case that will occur occasionally in linear data analysis. And a question of whether these are linearly independent or not comes down to a matter of numerical tolerance. Mathematically, they're distinct, but numerically, I personally would have a little bit of a problem saying that those are completely linearly independent. So let's observe right now that they are a basis. Suppose that our set that we're given is 1, 0, and that the next one is, sorry, let's make it 1, 1, and minus 2, minus 2. So are these a basis for a two-dimensional vector space? And the answer is no, that this is a multiple of minus 2 times that, so that is not a basis. Suppose that we're given 1, 1, and we're given 0, 0. And the question is, is this a basis for two-dimensional, for vectors of size 2? And the answer is that no, um, 0 is in every um, vector space, so the only thing that's non-zero is this one, and if there's only one and we're trying to get size 2, the numbers don't match up, so that is not a basis. Suppose that we're given these. Suppose we're given 1, 0, 0, 2, and then we're told that the first entry of the third vector is some value a, and the second entry is some value b. So are, are these a basis? Well, let's say, are they a spanning set? Because this and this failed because they weren't spanning sets. They didn't provide enough information. This is a spanning set, but I can see that I could construct this as a linear combination of these two. I could say that if I take a times this vector plus one half b times this vector, I get the third vector. So those are linearly dependent and they are not a basis. Well, how could we find a basis? What's an algorithm? And one method that we can use is we can gather all of the matrix, all the vectors that we're given, gather these into a matrix A. And for now, the order in which we do the gathering doesn't matter. We can do it in the order of appearance. We can do it by whatever method we want. But the idea is, let's gather all of the vectors together. And then what we'll say is that 
is that for a matrix R that is the reduced row echelon form of A, that each pivot of the reduced row echelon form R, each pivot of R is a linearly independent vector of the whole uh, of um, a vector space. Uh, which we'll call double barrel V. So let's take an example. So let's suppose that our matrix A is its first column is 1, 1, its second column is 2, minus 2, its third column is 6, 2. When I take the RREF, I find that the RREF of this is 1, 0, 4, and 0, 1, 1. I can see immediately that that means that this is a pivot, so the first column of A is part of a basis of a vector space, and then the second column of A is another part of a basis of a vector space. So if I take these two together, that they are a basis for some vector space, because there are two of them and size 2, I know that the vector space that they are a basis of is R2. And we'll note in passing that, uh, the, that we can calculate the null space from, this, from these values. So this is an algorithm or a method that we can use to find a basis for the vector space. Now, what is that? basis, what is that vector space? Well, in later sessions, we'll come to call that vector space the column space of this matrix. And that will be, so these are, are element, these are fundamental ideas for us, is that the REF pivots identify linearly independent vectors in the set of columns, and the vector space that is spanned by those columns is referred to as the column space of the matrix.